Pavehawk, Pavlo, Jayhawk, J. Brick Maniacs, welcome back to another episode of Brick Mania TV. Hey Brick Maniacs, welcome back today here on Brick Mania TV. Cody is here wow. showing off his Pavlo. I'm here for the second time. Second time, yeah, this is definitely not the, you know, second time Nothing filming happens. this. Nothing happens. Definitely not, you know, <laughs> deleting memory card accidentally for cat videos. Okay. Um, <laughs> so yes, the first time we're recording this. Cody, what do we got here? Um, well, like I said last time, this is the MH53M Pavlo burn. What? Like I said last time. Oh, I'm just burning. Yeah. Bring the camera guy. Um, history. Some history about the Pavlo. Well, there's a lot of different versions of this airframe. I guess we'll say the airframe. So it got its start, the HH-53 got its start in Vietnam, and that was called the Super Jolly Green Giant. And that was a larger version of the Jolly Green Giant, which the Jolly Green Giant was based off of the Sea King. <laughs> so there's, there's a progression of helicopters just getting a bigger. Version of this bigger. I don't know. Uh, the Russians have something that's Probably. quite a bit larger. <laughs> this might actually fit inside the Russian one. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, yeah, so actually the Sea King is what the president flies in. Ooh. Marine One is based off of a Sea King. And then it gets larger, and then here we are with the Pavlo. And then there's an even larger version that is the K model, which is the King Stallion. And that's new, and the, and the uh, Navy uses that one. Ooh. It's a little bit bigger. You can fit a Humvee inside that one. That's pretty cool. Anyways, talking about the Pavlo, this is the Air Force version. This is the Air Force. There's a Navy version. That is the Sea King. There's so many <laughs> versions. I can't stop talking about all the versions. Someone stop me. Let's talk about the Pavlo. When did this first <laughs> see combat? The combat... Well, I don't know. So they stopped making the airframes in you 1970. Go back to the airframes, don't you? I do because okay. it's. I'm trying to line up my history. <laughs> so it's it's a technologically more advanced version of the HH-53. Uh, the MH-53 Air Force version is designed for combat search and rescue. So it can carry up to 38 troops. Other versions can carry 55 troops. It can sling. 20,000 pounds of cargo. So it can actually carry another helicopter underneath it. That's pretty nice. I've seen pictures of it carrying a Chinook or another Pavlo. <laughs> another um, Dam damaged Pavlos. That's cool. So that's it can, nice. it's a heavy lift helicopter. It can, it can lift heavy things. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's very large. It is bigger than the Chinook. Uh, if you were to see a side by side graphic, maybe. Ooh. <laughs> got a thumbs up. Fancy. Awesome. <laughs> Look at this graphic. <laughs> Look at this graphic. It's got technological details. That's cool. There's numbers. Maybe some letters. <laughs> there we go. That's nice. So, graphic. Uh, this actually fulfilled many roles in its, in its lifespan. It was retri retired in 2008, and it saw service in Desert Storm. And it was mostly used in Desert Storm to guide Apaches to their targets, because it had very powerful technology inside of it that can map out an environment. It can fly in daylight, at night, um, in low terrain. Low so you terrain. Can, you can sneak up and you can see where you're going with all of its technology. So with helicopters like Little Birds and some Apaches with lesser uh, technology, this would guide them to the target safely, mostly undetected, and they can attack. Also, used for search and rescue, as I mentioned earlier. You can have some PJs in here. Um, I think we had the PJs in the Pavehawk kit yep. that Dan made. And yeah, so we mounted three mini guns in here. We could also carry three M2HBs with the air-cooled guns. Do you want to start tearing barrels. this thing apart, or do you want to? I do. Yeah. I'm, I'm done rambling about okay. <laughs> stuff. What? So. Yeah, let's get into the model a little cool. bit. Let's or maybe like let's give it a oh, 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 start, oh, start here. there. So that that's uh that's all connected internally, mm -hmm. which is pretty nuts. So I kind of stepped off of what I did with the Osprey. Yeah. 
I made it work in a similar fashion, and I did leave an axle hole exposed inside that you can motorize if you wanted to. No motor included in the kit, but if you want to motorize it, you can figure there it out. <laughs> also, you can break away the tail. So that's cool that you're still able to do this for kind of that stowage mode, transportation mm -hmm. mode. And it clicks back in and can yeah. drive that gear. So that's pretty awesome. So it's based off of a Navy helicopter, and the Navy likes to have all their vehicles collapse in some fashion to save space on top of the carrier sure. deck. So like the Sea King would have that capability, Sea Dragon, and the King Stallion. Yes. The sea Stallion, too. <laughs> so many variants. <laughs> Stick to this one. All right. Um, so we have drop tanks on the sides here, just off of the sides of the Sponsons. You well, were calling them super cool missiles earlier. Uh, super cool missiles. <laughs> they look like uh, little torpedoes or something. Okay. Um, drop tanks, I don't know. Uh, maybe just external fuel tanks. I don't know if they'd ever drop off their tanks. Maybe. You can pretend they do. <laughs> you can pretend they do. You can make them drop off. <laughs> um, I have some infrared sensors on the sides. I have flare and chaff dispensers. I think I'm poking it. Yep. <laughs> on the sides. There's really cool images of that. Yes. Yeah. Looking up. Just speaking of those. Kind of like the Archangel that the uh, yeah. C-130s do. Speaking of those drop tanks, they are mounted onto the, what were you calling it? Spot, the sponsons. Uh, sponsons. Yeah. You can pick this thing up by the sponson. Pick it up by the sponson. If I can get my fingers underneath it first. Pick it up by the sponson. And then sponson. You can sponsons? Is sponson the singular? Sponson I. Sponson I. So that's fun. I mean, that's fun. <laughs> <laughs> that's fun. <laughs> it's a fun model. It's no, fun, that is cool. fun playable yeah. features. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I kind of went all out as far as what details I could add mm -hmm. with having a large, big, empty tube. Right. It's fun to be able to cram in more stuff in a, on a larger scale, even though it's the same scale as our other models. Right. It's just big. You and can, when you, you can do more with it. Do you find it's more challenging to, to do, uh, maintain structural integrity when you go a bit larger? That is, that is definitely a factor, um, but this isn't like an airplane. It's not like the B-17. Sure. I don't have huge wings sticking out of the sides to worry about structure. Sure. Because that adds, adds a lot of weight and, you know, they have to hold, hold themselves up. This doesn't have wings. It just has sponsons. Just sponsons. <laughs> just little, little tiny wings. <laughs> um, What's also cool about this is that you can remove the top. Oh, and you gave it away. Well, was that not spot? Well, no, you're fine. What? It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> how are you going? How so, are you envisioning that we debut the fact that I wasn't? You just you were. I was just gonna. Them. I just wasn't even gonna talk about it. Okay. <laughs> uh, they just find out later. Okay. Yeah. I mean, when you build a model, you have, you have to buy it to figure out the rest of the video and when I'm gonna talk about all the details. Next episode, we're just going to stand here for five minutes and stare at the camera <laughs> and not talk about anything. Right. Is that, that's the plan. Since right. my hands are here, I did put the SATCOM. SATCOM. Satellite communications, the antenna here. Uh, so you open up these elephant ears. Ooh. That's what I call that. Well, that's actually what they call that's that. That's actually. <laughs> the elephant ears. They don't move like that in real life. But you do that, and then you can pull this up. The entire roof, rough, roof, rough roof. This is the escape pod version. It's the waterline model. Waterline model. <laughs> Brick me is good at building waterline models. Look at the Missouri. <laughs> so you can pull that off, and then you guys can't see what's inside. I'm just not gonna. Okay, show them. I'll show them. Show. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's a really awesome interior on this um, nicely tiled floor. And the uh, tracks there. Put some simulated runners in there yep. as the grill tiles. On the floor, there's a door. I like your uh, benches that fold up to take the up the same amount of space. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Weird. Your benches. Show the benches. Uh, yeah. There's no, a it is cool that that's that, that detail there. Obviously, you're limited to the Lego scale, but so you can lift the benches up, and that looks cool. <laughs> it doesn't conserve a lot of space in the model. In real life, it's flat, like flush. <laughs> right. right? It, yeah. it's, it's perfectly flush like that. Um, so you can see the three mini guns we mounted. We have one on the back door ramp. And we have one on the right side and the left side. Why'd you go with miniguns? Oh, miniguns are cool. Because okay, he thinks miniguns are cool. Because miniguns are cool, and they can do it. So if it has the ability to carry three miniguns, dude, I'm going to put three miniguns in it. <laughs> what about three miniguns and three 50 cals? Not at the same time. What about a 50 cal minigun? <sighs> we could. Maybe. I don't know if they're going to have One big minigun at the back. <laughs> okay, keep going. Keep going. Um, yeah, so that's some internal details that you can see in the cockpit. Slam did some cool printed yeah. artwork here. I'll try to hold it steady while not breaking things. Oh, <laughs> just lost all of your fuel. Oh no, fuel um, Yeah, there's some cool Easter eggs in that cockpit uh, printing. Mm -hmm. uh, 
you know, we always try to hide stuff whenever possible. So observe your tile before you put it in there. Some, observe some, thy some tile. Some cool <laughs> Easter eggs inside that. Um, so it can fit a crew of six. Well, it can fit more than that, but the crew, without adding any additional soldiers, is six. You have pilot, co-pilot, two crew chiefs, and two door gunners. Is that a segue into the minifigures? Yeah, might as well Thanks, be. Cody. <laughs> you bet. Um, keep it simple. Uh, six guys um, with two variants. And oops. Um, so starting off with the pilot, co-pilot, and I guess uh, one of the crew chiefs. Yeah, one of the crew chiefs. <laughs> um, <clears throat> simple pilot jumpsuit in tan, and you got those um, fire-resistant with the Nomax gloves. They're all kind of wearing those green, greenish gloves. You know what I'm talking yeah. about? Yeah. Yeah, of course you do. Uh, boots, I do. sunglasses, and the uh, the uh, pilot smirk. Pilots have a smirk. Yeah. They're pumped about being able to fly something <laughs> awesome. So I'd be pumped I about think flying I'd be this. Smirking too. Uh, cool sunglasses. Um, yeah, moving on to the the gunners. So these are door gunners and tail gunners. Um, depending on if they're at a door or if they're at the tail. Whoa! Right. And well, one of them you could call the other crew chief. You could, yeah. <laughs> so, or they could be a crew chief. Yeah. Right. Um, so woodland camo. Uh, you see that pop up every now and then. Um, even even up till today. Um, just woodland camo is pretty awesome, and it's popular still. Yeah. Still, definitely. Uh, you have the kind of flight this harness, so they can clip in when they are, uh, you know, hanging out the back of the door. So <laughs> they don't get sucked out. Yep, that would not be cool. <laughs> not cool. Not cool. So, yeah, cool guy. Uh, balaclava, kind of just to keep that uh, wind out of their face, and some sunglasses as well, kind of more sporty style sunglasses. Um, Front and back printing, printing underneath the arms on all these figures. I lied, except for these guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man. Okay, yeah, 360 printing um, on all the figures, underarm printing on the gunners. Uh, yeah, cool. Sweet. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to go over some more printing on the model. So we have the printed kit number <laughs> on the front. We did that. There's always a number there. And we decided to put the kit number there as we usually do. Yeah. That that's just an easy number of references, the kit number. Would they ever have 8,000 of these? Probably not. <laughs> and we have the FLIR printed on the bottom. You've all Blur. seen the FLIR before, forward-looking infrared. FLIR, yes. <laughs> um, that's mounted on the package in the front. We have a couple different radomes on there. We radomes. Have the radomes? What did you say? Radomes. Radomes. <laughs> what does that mean? They're radar, radar domes. Radar oh domes. <laughs> Rad domes. <laughs> and the refueling probe. Or a flamethrower if you... If you reverse it. <laughs> it's awesome. I'm sure that's exactly how it works. It totally is. <laughs> cool. Uh, retractable landing gear also on the underside. And it's nice that this landing gear is simple. It just tucks right up. Nice. <laughs> and is exposed just like on the real one. Yeah, uh, is that is that your favorite part? Is when you can get a nice, simple, strong landing gear. It is. Okay, yeah. <laughs> he just sits there and broods for hours, and then all of a sudden he's got this landing gear. Like yes, yes, simple landing gear, awesome. Brooding, Cody. So I didn't have to brood very long over that landing gear. It's pretty simple. <laughs> um, we have an external hook here that you can hook a midi fig on, and he can go down and up with it. Because that's fun. This door also opens here on the side, but if there's a mini gun mounted there, you typically wouldn't open that door. And that's pretty much cool. the model. I'll put this back on top. And I did make the rotors collapse also. Am I going to make you do that in the time lapse? Yes. Are you going to make me? Okay, me here we go. Roof. Let me get the roof on first. Okay, okay. And <laughs> wait, wait, wait. start the time lapse wait, wait, wait. starting now. Okay, we're back. <laughs> we're back to regular speed. <laughs> actually, we record all of our episodes in fast motion to save on camera space, and we slow them down. So I'm actually really good at doing this sort of thing. You just we're speaking <laughs> super fast in real life. They're just slowing it down. Yes. Um, yeah, cool. So now this is uh, in the stowage mode. Stowage mode. Stowage mode. So this is something that the Navy does. I don't know if payloads you really ever see this unless they're transporting it inside of like a C5 Galaxy or something. Cool. Anything else? Yeah. 
That's it. I think that's, that's it. it. I think that's the kit. That is the kit. This thing is crazy. This is, oh, did we mention this is the fan choice in case you didn't notice? Right. In case you didn't know that, we did a fan poll a couple weeks back. And this is it. Now it is available right now. Get it while you can. A couple months back. Was it a couple months back? <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Time it's, machine, It's man. been a while. It's been a while. Uh, it's finally here. It's awesome. Uh, we're super pumped for this. Yeah, a couple months, you're right. Um, I guess with that, that is the episode. Yes, that's the episode. For more information, please check out BrickMania.com. Like, comment, and subscribe, and ring the bell. And ring the bell. <laughs> Ding. That's the Pavlo. Sweet.